In this video, we'll be looking at two types of non-parametric tests, Kruskal-Wallace and Mann-Whitney. Mann-Whitney test is a non-parametric version of your independent sample t-test, and it's used when dealing with ordinal or non-normal interval-dependent variables. Similarly, the Kruskal-Wallace test is a non-parametric version of the ANOVA, and it's also used when dealing with ordinal or non-normal interval-dependent variables when you have more than two samples. Because non-parametric tests don't make any assumptions about the underlying distribution of data, unlike the t-test or ANOVA, which assume that data is normally distributed, uh, non-parametric tests are therefore not as powerful as parametric tests. So when you do have normally distributed data that also satisfies the other assumptions, uh, you should definitely use the parametric tests. When the dependent variable is non-normal or ordinal, as is the case in the examples that we'll look at today, you should always analyze the median of the data rather than the mean. So the non-parametric test that we will look at today compares sample medians. That means that their null hypothesis tests whether the medians of the samples are the same. In the two examples that we'll consider today, we will recode interval variables into ordinal variables. And this is generally not done, as you would generally run parametric analysis on interval variables if all of the assumptions of the t-test and ANOVA were met. But we're doing this just to illustrate how to use non-parametric statistics in Minitab. So in our first example, let's say we wanted to know if men and women showed differences in snow predictions relative to the actual snow total. And let's say that that actual snow total was 15 inches. And as I'll show you shortly in Minitab, we're given two columns of data, gender and snow predictions. And snow predictions is an interval scale, but in order to demonstrate these non-parametric tests, we want to convert it into an ordinal scale. So assuming that the actual snowfall was 15 inches, let's recode the snow predictions as follows. So if an individual guessed more than two inches below the actual snowfall, we want to recode the value as one. If an individual was within plus or minus two inches of the actual snowfall, we want to record it as two. And if the individual predicted two or more inches more than the actual snowfall, we want to record it as three. So let me show you how this can be done in Minitab. So here we have actually three columns of data, but for this problem, we're only interested in the first two. We have gender, categorical variable, male, female, and snow prediction, which is an interval variable but we want to convert it into an ordinal scale. In order to do this, we go to data, code, numeric to numeric. We want to quote data from the snow prediction column. And now it's asking us where we want to store the data. And you can essentially store the data in any column, but let's say we just want to replace it in the exact same column. So we pick snow prediction as well. If you didn't want to overwrite your original data, you could pick any other. You could create a new column to store it in. And now it's asking us which original values we want to change and what that new value should be. So like we said, anything more than two inches below should be recoded as one. So anything between one and 12 inches should be recoded as one. We said that anything plus or minus two inches from actual would be recoded by two. So anything between 13 and 17 will be changed by two. And anything more than two inches above the actual will be recoded by uh, three. So I'll go up to 100, from 18 inches to 100, and we'll recode that by three. And now, all of a sudden, the snow prediction column uh, contains ordinal values. And I want you to think about why this is now an ordinal scale and not an interval scale. Now let's try to answer a question. Since we have an ordinal scale, we cannot use the t-test, but we can use the Mann-Whitney test, which is the non-parametric version of the independent sample t-test. We go to STAT, non-parametrics, Mann-Whitney. But, as we can see, Mann-Whitney requires uh, first sample and second sample to be stored in two different columns, and all of our data is in a single column. But we can fix this very quickly in Minitab by using the data unstack command. So we go to data, we go to unstack columns. We would like to unstack snow predictions by using subscripts in gender. So we'd like to have one 
column that contains snow predictions for females and one that contains snow predictions for males. And we'd like to, we don't want to save it in a new worksheet. We just want to save it in the same worksheet after last column in use. So now, all of a sudden, we have the two columns that we need. And as you will see, the sample sizes are not the same, which is fine because man weighting test does not require equal sample sizes. So now we can actually run this test. So we go to stat, non-parametric, man Whitney. Our first sample is no prediction for female. Our second sample is no prediction for male. And you can specify the confidence interval, which we'll leave at 95. And then you can specify whether you want to do a one-sided or two-sided alternative. We'll keep it as is, where the alternative hypothesis is that the medians of the two samples are not equal. Remember, it's the medians, not the means. We press OK. So now we, here we have the results table. Uh, and remember that Man Whitney is a rank test, and it compares the differences between the medians of the different samples. In a Man Whitney test, we're not looking at actual data points, but we're looking at their respective ranks. So each original data point is assigned with a rank, which is based on the total amount of data. So it's based on all 75 observations. So our null hypothesis in this test tests whether median from um, snow prediction female equals the median from snow prediction male. The W represents the test statistic for the Mad Wheaton test. And we see that the p-value is very big. So we cannot reject that these two are equal. A few more things to note in this table. The etas, uh, they're essentially Greek symbols that are sometimes used to denote medians. And this point estimate for eta1 uh, minus eta2 uh, denotes the median of all possible pairwise differences between the two samples. You will also see that the table of results shows two different p-values. Uh, the first is just a regular p-value, and the second is a p-value, it says adjusted for ties. When Minitab encounters a tie, and a tie means that two or more data points have the same rank, then Minitab assigns the average rank to each observation in the tie. And this p-value adjusted for tie reflects uh, reflects this problem in that it allows Minitab to adjust the denominator uh, to calculate the W statistic. Okay. Now, let's consider a different example. Now, let's say we wanted to know whether individuals from three different regions show differences in snow predictions relative to that actual snow total of 15 inches. So in this case, we want to compare medians of three samples and to see whether one is different than the others. Because we have more than two samples, we have to use a test um, that will allow us to deal with more than two samples. And in this case, we'll use the Kruskal-Wallis test. Um, and remember that for normally distributed interval data, you generally use the ANOVA. As in the uh, Man Whitney test, when computing uh, the Kruskal Wallace test statistics, each observation is replaced by its rank in an ordered combination of all of the variables. So, for example, the lowest value, the lowest observation, or the lowest predicted value of the snowfall will be replaced by a rank of 1, the following value will be replaced by a rank of 2, and the largest one will be replaced by a rank of 75 because we have a total of 75 observations in all of the samples. And just like in the Mann-Whitney test, the Kruskal-Wallace test also um, will assign ties uh, an average rank. So let's go back to our mini-tab. So in, now, we want to, uh, now we want to assess whether snow predictions um, are different based on uh, which region the individual comes from. So we're interested in these two columns. And again, we're using the ordinal scale for the snow predictions. Unlike in the Mann-Whitney test, however, in Kruskal-Wallis test, the data has to be stacked in order to run through Minitab. So we want to have a single column 
for the dependent variable. Uh, and we want to have another column uh, containing levels of the factor, which would be the three different regions. So we'd go to stat, non-parametrics, Kruskal Wallace. So our response variable is the snow prediction, but not the snow prediction female or male, just the original snow prediction. And our factor is the region. So we click OK, and we obtain our results. Uh, again, there are several different values in this test, which resembles the ANOVA uh, table a little. Uh, the average rank indicates um, the average rank for your dependent variable. So the higher uh, this rank is, the higher your average rank for the dependent variable, or in other words, the higher the snow guesses. The H represents the statistic of the Kruskal Wallace test. And again, we have two different p-values, the normal p-value and the p-value adjusted for ties. And just like in the Manhattan test, um, this is done in a similar uh, fashion where the denominator is adjusted uh, by readjusting the rank of the ties. Again, in this case, the p-value is big. So you can't say that a region has any effect on whether prediction is above, below, or on target. One point to note is that in general, the p-value and the p-value adjusted for ties uh, shouldn't be that different in that it shouldn't be the case that one p-value indicates that you should uh, reject the null hypothesis whether the other one doesn't. So in conclusion, there are several assumptions uh, related to the Mann-Whitney and Kruskal-Wallis test. The Mann-Whitney assumes that distributions of the samples have the same shape and equal variances the data must come from independent samples, meaning that data that's in one sample cannot be related to data that's in another sample. And in this case, this was certainly true because in our case, one sample came from uh, male guesses and one came from female guesses. And it would have been impossible to have one person in both the male and female groups. Um, Man Whitney also allows you to compare samples that don't have to be of the same size. Crystal Wallace uh, assumes that distributions have the same shape uh, and the samples, again, have to be independent. And Crystal Wallace does require that you have uh, population sizes of five or more. Um, it doesn't actually require it, but it will give you an error uh, or it will give you a warning if you have less than five uh, samples.